Hi, everybody. So this presentation is uh, titled Pattern Recognition and Natural Language Processing Approach to Automated XPR Extraction. And um, these are the co-authors, as an Adam, myself, Sherry Lee, and Yuri Akashiko. <coughs> she can make it. She is in the U.S. Um, and we are based in uh, San Jose, California. So this uh, presentation is an overview of, uh, of the data extraction part of SmartXVR. Um, so we may not be able to go into some of the details of, uh, of working with SmartXVR, which is web-based. For that, um, you can visit uh, demo.smartxvrl.com. Um, I'll give you that uh, web address again at the end of the presentation. Um, so, so to introduce, um, XBRL, we all know, um, is a language, it's a reporting language. Um, it's within the standard for describing financial and uh, related data. Um, it's a method to assign standard tags, financial data in reports and, and systems. So we have uh, developed a simplified, automated way uh, to create an SEC compliant XBRL document. Um, so in this study, uh, we developed an automated system to derive text and tables um, from 10Q or 10K uh, financial document and do detail tag. The detail tag part is still a work in progress. Um, so I will talk a little bit from the research side what we are working on uh, and the data extraction side. Uh, so this is the flow chart, overall flow chart of the Smart XPR system here uh, in the file. HTML file up and then the extraction um, where we we look into uh, the content of the state thank you and we try to find the relevant information to be extracted. Um, one of the methods um, is syntactic semantic tagging for example. Um, here we take take the uh, relevant say financial table for example uh, cash flow or and then we try to find the concept and then we try to tag it using um, some linguistic uh, methods. Then it gets verified by uh, some of the matter experts and then we can break the, the XPR file uh, for SEC submission. Um, so for this study, um, our goal uh, is to locate, identify, and uh, extract the state API document and then secondly, uh, locate, extract, and modify the fourth initial table cash flow and statement balance sheet and uh, um, And also, uh, if you're familiar with parentheticals, so we try to generate auto, uh, automatically the parenthetical information from uh, the financial table. Um, and then we try to extract notes um, as a block text. Um, and then finally, we try to detail tagging, which is part of the requirement. So this is a sample NQ. Here in the beginning, this is the part where we get the DBI information, usually speaking, and then the four financial tables are in some part of 10Q. This is the model of a snapshot of a 10Q document. And then finally notes, this is where we get our notes in the 10Q document. So the first step is to locate where these items are in a document. Now DBI extraction, this is a snapshot of our model of ECL smart XPR. Extraction. Um, so on the, the first column, we have different fields, document type, for example, or amendment flag. These are the fields that we are looking for the value for that document uh, from a 10 Q document. Uh, so DI extraction is location is usually given in the beginning part of the document. Then we use a heuristic based pattern recognition algorithm that identifies DEI information. Uh, for example, if you have the document type, you want to find the keyword to look for its form in a technical file, for example, and then the document type will be mentioned. Uh, performance of the EI extraction uh, is around 98 to 89%. Uh, this is for 10 companies that we did. Uh, evaluation is a standard evaluation, correct versus total. Um, and then after that, it's, uh, it's manually uh, edited. And we check validated for remaining percent for SEC filing purposes. And this is this is a snapshot of SmartXPRL uh, version 1.0. There may be an updated version of the 
the web um, from a recent point of view. These are the feeds we try to extract from a 10 cube or 10k uh, document. Uh, the next step, uh, the next task is a financial table, four financial tables. Here again, you have to locate where those things are in the financial table. Uh, identify the financial table uh, layout from a normal text or images and put it points. Uh, identify the header lines and differentiate between a column and another row header and the title in the table. And link this, once you have identified the table, then you go inside the table and try to understand what's there in the cell and link the cell content to the cell data. So overall, what we're trying to do is we are trying to first identify, especially, what is a table. And once we have identified the table, and this we are doing automatically, uh, we try to go in inside the table and, and decide whether, what kind of initial uh, table it is, and then go inside the cell and do some modification there. So uh, to give you some context, uh, in our previous work uh, in 1996, uh, we did a uh, table identification, table location uh, system, which was heuristic based uh, for extracting table. Uh, we used the absolute position of text elements in a document. Uh, so first the document is uh, segmented and analyzed by means of image processing uh, techniques to detect potential table. Uh, parts of that are then passed on to the OCR engine and some text processing uh, module that has some linguistic uh, processing parts, so syntactic, semantic, uh, for example, we analyze the text and then try to understand, okay, this is a table. So this is, for our previous work, this is the architecture of that. Uh, we have scan image, we have table isolation heuristics, then OCR comes in, and along with component analysis, and then we do linguistic analysis on top of that with text around it, and then we decide, okay, this is the table. So this was our 1996 work, uh, uh, on table extraction. Now, so to recap, for our previous work, we could isolate embedded tables from a document and identify, we'll go inside the table now once we have identified it, identify table components such as title blocks, and table entries, footer blocks, and other cell, uh, what are the content of the cell, uh, those things we can now identify and extract. So performance for the 1996 study uh, is this. Here we have detection of tables and detection of cells, and PNR, our precision recall, is a pretty standard uh, evaluation mechanism in IR and LOP uh, uh, work. So P is precision, which is the number correct by total recall. is basically coverage. So for example, for scientific journals, uh, if you have total, what percent of your scientific journal is this okay? Uh, so for the numbers, if you look at the precision number for detection of tables, scientific journals, the, the system did fairly well, 93 percent, which is very good detection of cells for 97 percent. I'm looking at the precision scores. By nine, for scientific journals, I'm sorry. For financial tables, uh, the story was not that good, uh, 71 percent, and detection of cells, once you identify the table, is within the figure of the cell, it's now 90 percent. So 71% for financial table, uh, it may be acceptable for, uh, for a research paper or for a product, it's not uh, good enough for uh, The reason for this low score back then uh, was the variability in the data. Uh, and also the NLP module was not fine-tuned for this particular uh, domain. Scientific journals, as you might be aware of, IEEE, for example, they have a set format. And then you have to format your tables, you have to format your paragraphs according to their uh, latex or word uh, file uh, formulations. So that way it's easier for the automated system to extract and, and uh, the information retrieval part is easier to do when this, the formatting is, is good. But for financial table, same company, different portal, different CFO, or even same CFO will form, formulate and present the work uh, present the, the text and the table in a totally different format. He may use Word or she may use Word, perhaps a Word or hand quoted. We have seen way many different variations of tables, the way we perform tables, for example. So those are the challenges here in the financial domain where there's a lot of variability. 
and we we uh, we try to address this with, uh, with with natural processing techniques again, but we still feel that uh, variability is pulling us down uh, in, in this domain. Uh, initial table extraction. Now we come to the current smart XBRL system. So the algorithm here is is uh, focused towards finding a minimum set of rectangles that covers all white space of a page. Um, so the goal here is to for, to, to locate and identify tables. Then those tables or so-called tables at this stage are identified by assuming that text and images are all represented by a bounding rectangle with sides parallel to the page borders. So these are some simplistic heuristics we have implemented and they are working very well in, in identifying a table. There are, there are more layers of uh, rules and subrules uh, here, but I'm just giving you a, a broader uh, overview of, of this uh, algorithm. So, in order to extract the four phase financial tables, you can say the cash flow value sheet of equity. This is the architecture of our um, extraction algorithm. So, peak processing here, we get rid of the stop word, for example, you might be aware of words that do not add any semantic meaning to it. Um, so we different those. Then the pattern matching part comes in. So the location, identification, and extraction, these three are very important for any automated system. So often those uh, here is done based on again pattern matching algorithm that looks at the typological position of the nodes inside a key document. So this is a snapshot of nodes and other output of smart XPR. This is again version 1.0. We may have a, a, an updated version if you go out on the web. So here we have node 1 um, and node 17. So this document, I think it's a 10Q document that has, a, has 17 nodes. And these are our block nodes. And in the, if you go to the demo page, you can click on one of these and you can get to the nodes part. And then you can verify and convert to XPR file. Uh, in addition, you have EPI and all the four financial uh, tables here. So again, you can click on one of these and get to the table, verify the data, and then generate the uh, HBRL, and then you can generate the file. So this end-to-end -end is all automated. The verification is, yes, done by subject matter experts, uh, but end-to-end, -end, we are trying to automate this process using NLP and uh, pattern matching. Now, detail tagging. This is a tough problem. Uh, we all know that. Um, and NLP is tough uh, with the processing speed of the machines right now. It's, much, it's getting much better, though. Uh, and the, the reason for that is we need training corpus. We train our models on, on, on the corpora. And more the exhaustive. The, oh, thanks. Um, so, the goal here is, this is from Genq, top left paradigm. What we want to do is convert it to a regular format <coughs> automatically. So here we need to understand the meaning of that text, linguistically speaking. And the way we do it, we are doing right now, is using natural language processing and uh, method, and then we convert it to this. So briefly I'll go over this uh, natural language part. Uh, since I have only uh, four minutes left. Um, so, the first step is to make this piece of text ready for the parser, parser meaning natural language processing, parser. The first step is to get rid of software, which we discussed earlier. Then next, uh, after that, we do pass tagging, we call it, it's called part of speech tagging. Um, each word is identified over part of speech with based on the syntax of its language. There's and then we do send it to parser, which converts it to tree structure. This is the tree structure. This is a phrase structure, tree diagram. Once it's collapsed into the tree structure, it's much easier to understand what, or what piece of text is related to what piece of text and number. So we traverse the tree, we find the nodes at the distance, and we make it a classification problem. So in classification, we can use, uh, we are using two methods the Bayesian classifier method and the support vector machine, which is the machine learning algorithm, where we have uh, collected a lot of training corpus from 10Q filing and 10K filing, 
we learn from that. And then based on the knowledge we learn from that, we at the runtime we uh, try to tag, detail tag, the new thing to find based on the trading models, uh, based on the models. So that's the overall overall process. Some results, uh, this is pre-tagging, pre this is for block text. Um, again, we are using P and R here, precision what we call it, standard evaluation mechanism here. For tables, we are getting for detection and extraction of cells, we are getting mid-90s, which is uh, not bad. Um, EI is around 97, 93 percent, which is very good. Parenthetical 83 and 78, this is a tougher problem, um, and, and we understand that. Um, and again, it goes back to two things one is variability in the data. So you are writing in a very different way than the next time you have uh, than the previous one, somebody else is writing. Um, uh, notes, we are getting good 93 for uh, detection and 86 for extraction of cell and heart. For uh, detail tagging, uh, this is the result we are getting. We are, this is still work in progress, we must admit that. Um, so for example, for accounting policy, we have 90% accuracy here. Uh, overall, it's 90s, mid 90s, that's our accuracy for the fully automated system. There are a couple of places where we get to mid 70s. So individual policy planning 75%, individual table 76%, and detection uh, 75%. This, these could be attributed to a couple of reasons. One, again, natural language processing the data is, is good. Um, garbage in, garbage out. Uh, you can get good training on it. You can train the system on good piece of data. Uh, if there's a lot of variability, we need to go back to the point. We need to get the NLP module to, to understand the variability. And the way to do, in my personal opinion, is now. We need to understand the semantic, build the model based on semantic, uh, but it's a tough problem. It's labor intensive in the beginning part because you have to annotate the data manually, and then based on that, you learn from that, and then at one time you, know, uh, uh, you can test the data. So that's our detail tagging uh, percentage uh, evaluation. Uh, to conclude and future work, uh, to recap, uh, in this presentation, we we described a way to locate, identify, and extract DEI for financial table notes at a block and detailed notes. Um, we follow here keyword-based factor matching and NLP methods to do these jobs. For future work, uh, we will have to find tune our algorithm to increase accuracy of analytical tables, uh, notes, and uh, for detail tagging, we need to find tune our NLP model. Uh, more to get towards semantics, understanding the semantic and, and traversing the tree structure. And also we are not evaluating in this presentation, we didn't evaluate the generation part of the FBR system. So in the next version or next uh, publication we are going to do that. So yep, that concludes our discussion. Uh, so demo.smartxbrl.com. You can go and play with the system. I believe you have to sign up and you can play with the system and see for yourself. Thank you very much. I should say, and I won't get this accurate, but on the first day, you, your team won an award. What exactly was that award? Uh, 